Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, people of God. It's a good thing to be in God's presence this morning once again. It is a Friday, 25th September 2020, and I hope that as the Lord, Word of God comes to you right in your house, you will be blessed. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, we ask your presence in our midst this morning that you speak to us from your word. May the Holy Spirit meet us at the point of your word we are about to share. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our topic this morning is watch your words. Watch your words. And our text will be taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 1 to 7. From the New King James Version, it reads thus, Walk prudently when you go to the house of God, and draw near to hear rather than to give the sacrifices of fools, for they do not know that they do evil. Do not be rash with your mouth, and let not your heart utter anything hastily before God, for God is in heaven and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. For dream comes through much activity, and a fool's voice is known by his many words. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin, nor say before the messenger of God, that it was an error. Why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the work of your hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity. But fear God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Watch your words is the topic once again. And it is interesting to note from our passage that God places caution on how we engage our tongues to express our thoughts and feelings in life. God places caution on how we engage, how we put our tongue to use in expressing what we think or what we feel in life. Words, as you will agree with me, are very powerful and Christians are constantly admonished to use them with careful consideration of their positive and negative impacts. Words can make, words can equally mar, depending on the way you put them to use in expressing your thoughts and expressing your feelings in your everyday living. In our passage this morning, we are told in verse 2, do not be rash. In other words, do not be quick. Don't be in a hurry with your mouth and let not your heart utter anything before God that you are not serious about. For God is in heaven 
and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. It is better to be one who speaks few words and listens much more than one who speaks much and listens a little. Because words are powerful. Words are strong. Words can build. Words can also destroy. In James chapter 3, verses 7 to 10, we are brought to the fact that words can achieve a lot in our lives. It is a reality that our words are prompted by our feelings, our thoughts, and our inspirations. James says the tongue is a very powerful weapon. Every other thing in the world has been tamed by man. But it seems, as the Bible puts it, only the tongue has not been successfully tamed. Because most times, when we don't intend to say something, we see ourselves saying it. And again, even when we intend saying something, maybe it is not exactly the way we want to say it that our mouth will put it. That gives us a caution. It brings us a warning that we should be careful as God's children in the way and manner in which we use our tongue so that we do not speak words that will be negative in the ears and life of those who hear them. Rather, we will be instruments of building up people who hear words that are spiced by the Spirit of God as the issue from our mouth. As a Christian, therefore, you must not stumble in the way and manner you use words. Rather, ask the Holy Spirit to grant you the spirit of self-control so that whatever is coming out of your mouth will be full of the grace of God for the healing and the blessing of those who hear them. Beloved in Christ, as you go out today, be aware that there are people who will annoy you. Some will deliberately offend you. Some will mistakenly bring annoyance your way. There are situations that could prompt negative reactions from you as we go about our activity in life today. Your response to such occasions that may probably bring annoyance to you should be guided by the Holy Spirit. You should not just open your mouth and speak words because you are hot and speak words that will bring hurt to others around you. There are Christians who rain curses at every slightest provocation. I, I attended a service some time ago in another, in a colleague's church. I, I was on vacation and I had opportunity to worship in another church where I am not uh, a priest. I was in the congregation and this vicar had asked the members of the church to support a particular cause that the church was in need of. And members were adamant to stand up and to respond to the call of their vicar. And angrily the vicar said, because you are not responding, all the prayers of blessing I've been praying for you in this church, I retrieve them. <laughs> Those are terrible words. And I had to draw my friend's attention to what he said at the end of the service and pleaded with him that if possible in the next service, he needed to apologize to the congregation because those were not words that should come from the mouth of a priest, a clergyman whom a congregation looks up to. How can you retrieve the blessings of God? It's not possible. God ordained every clergyman to be a blessing to his congregation. And no matter the offense that the congregation may bring to us, it does not warrant the priests, in my own thinking, to release costs or to withdraw blessings 
from his congregation. Beloved, remember that we are called to be men and women of few words. Because in the midst of multitude of talk, in the midst of multitude of words, sin abounds. And you have to be cautious of that. Are you going to be a sinner today because of the word you are going to speak from your mouth that will hurt others? Or you will be one of those whom we allow the Spirit of God to use him, to use her, to bring succor to people from the words that we issue from your mouth. Some Christians even go to the extent of declaring publicly that Christ be put aside when they are angry. That is terrible. How can you put Christ aside from your life? Paul will say in the book of Romans, watch as separators from the love of Christ. What is it? Is it anger? Will it take you away from the love of Jesus Christ? The answer should be no. No matter how angry, no matter how offended we may be, we should be cautious the way and manner we use our words. Think well. Choose your words so that those words will bring glory to God and bring blessing upon God's people. There are Christian homes that have come, become a place of noise and trouble owing to inability to engage the tongue for positive purposes. You see, early in the morning, father fighting, mother, children fighting, parents, and the whole house is in disarray. That should not be our portion. God did not create us for that. The husband can be a little bit more cautious of the misdeeds of his wife. The wife can also be a little bit more cautious of the misdeeds of the children. The children same with their father. And with understanding and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we will not use words in our homes that will destroy our family members. Our words, you must note, can defile us before God if we misuse them. Words have the capacity to defile. It can defile you. It can defile me. Jesus Christ will say in Matthew chapter 15, verse 11, Not what goes into the mouth defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a man. That shows to us that what, what, what issues from our mouth, what we use our tongue to do, can defile us, can remove us from, from God's presence without us even knowing it or taking note of it. But this morning, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit of God, is speaking to us, speaking to you right in your home. Watch your words. It is interesting to note further that a man speaks from the abundance of his heart. It is what is in your heart that your mouth will bring forth. Therefore, in all our endeavors today, wherever we may be, do not be hasty to utter anything prompted by situations around you. You may probably practice God's presence. What I am going to say now, Will it glorify God? And if within your spirit you know it will not, then hold it within you. Don't speak it out. And by so doing, you bring life to those who are hearing you. Let your words be seasoned with grace. And so your hearers will be edified. I take that again. Let your words be seasoned with grace so your hearers will be edified. There is no use using words to destroy those around you. Do not speak rashly today. Rather, speak gracefully, and the good Lord will bless you. Bow your heads as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your word that has come to us this morning. It is our prayer that you grant each and every one of us, the grace to be watchful in the way we use our tongue to the glory of your holy name and to the blessing 
of your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 